guys and welcome to today's video where today I am looking at the swell fogging system. Now to be completely honest with you guys, uh, I have been sent these items, I am working with swell to sort of check out some of their own brand uh, products, sort of unbox them, set them up, give my opinion on them. If there's anything you've ever looked at on their site and you're like, hmm, I wonder what that's actually like in real life, like how does that actually work? Is it any good? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see what I can do in terms of getting hold of that product and uh, potentially reviewing it. But yes, today we are looking at the fogging system. So one thing I would like to say though is even if you do use a fogging system, please don't stop spraying down your tank because this can definitely help with humidity but your geckos need to drink and I actually don't think there's too much of an issue put, even putting like a little bowl of water. I know with my geckos they'll drink out of like bromeliads or anywhere where water collects as well as drinking off of like leaves and everything so although I will be using this I won't stop spraying down my geckos tanks. Now one thing I've noticed straight away, and you can kind of see the reflection of my tripod in this, but this is kind of a tinted colour, so it's not completely see-through, and I think that's actually good. So like six years ago, I think I got my first fogging system, and unfortunately it broke not too long after, uh, just the tubing that broke, but it was completely see-through, and the thing is, with these fogging systems, you fill them up with water so they can last a while, but sometimes if there's a chance the sun could reach the water. You can get algae issues where I think this might block that, or well, hopefully. Uh, so that's quite a good feature. Now in terms of tubing, it says on the website there's 160 centimeter tubing, so I'm assuming. Oh wow, that's satisfying. Yeah, that, <laughs> that expands. And then we've got these bits and pieces here. So let's have a quick read through this and set it up. So first we need to undo this and fill it up with water. I can confirm that's a lot easier to do if you have someone to help you. I thought I'd be able to do it on my own, but no. And now we're gonna add the tubing on. So let's expand that a bit more. Now one thing I will say is the tubing feels uh, quite delicate. Like when I'm pushing this on, I'm like, okay, watch out this doesn't split. Obviously, this is probably the only time you're really going to handle this uh, tubing. Once it's set up, it should be okay. But when it's spread out, it's okay here, but just at the end felt a little bit thin. Now we're going to add on the suction cups. Okay, so just to say, this is the top of the fogger. There's nothing to attach here. Once you've chosen where it's going, you you know, you go like that and it goes over the side of the tank. So I stuck it to the side of Drogo's tank and I actually just made the tube smaller because there, there was no need in the extra, but I think that's kind of a good option. If you have too much, you can make it smaller. It's not gonna just hang everywhere. However, um, this is just popping off. So I took one of the suction cups off because I didn't need two, but I'm thinking now I might need one just here to like hold it in place. Otherwise it's just flicking around. Okay, so I think I finally got it. Oh my goodness, I am having a hot flush right now. That was so faffy. I think it would be so much easier if you had, I see the suction cups come off now. If you had a suction cup that had a half bit, so you can just clip it onto this, just hook it on because, oh, that was such a pain. And even now, I don't know how good this is gonna work because it is just sort of floating above. It's not really pressing right down into the tank. Also, because the tubing is quite thin, I was so scared I was about to split it. I quickly just turned it on so we could see if it's working. It is working. I'm gonna turn it up to the top uh, speed. Unfortunately, Drogo has so many plants in here. Oh, there you go. Okay, so it's coming through. What I'm going to do though is because technically you should really have the fogger on at night, not in the day. So I'm going to turn it off for now, return to night, and we're going to see it in full swing. Well, the purpose of this video, and the only time I'll do this, is I will put the light on so you can actually see the fog. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it up a bit now because you probably can't actually see it. There's a little bit coming out. I'm going to start to raise that up. 
and now it's really pumping out. I will say a lot of it is on top, so I'm wondering whether to make something at the end of this hose so it directs the uh, steam down or the mist down. But Mr. Drago is out over here. I just saw him licking his lips. He loves a bit of this. So um, he's just hanging out there. This is actually filling up though. Despite it going over the top, there's a lot coming out. This is really filling up the area. So I've had it on in Lyra's tank for about a minute now and I don't know how much the camera's picking up but it's really filling up in there. Now Drago's tank is 45 by 45 by 60 centimetres, Lyra's is 60 by 45 by 60. So if you have a different size tank you can see how quick this will actually fill up. Now I wanted to quickly talk about fogging, whether it's safe, what are the risks in terms of respiratory issues and so on. So first I'm going to open this up just so we can have a better look. So should we all be using a fogger? I feel like um, in captivity there's a lot of animals, especially chameleons and geckos, like crested geckos, that are often um, not hydrated enough, you know? And I do feel like we need to provide a little extra for them. I don't think everyone needs to run out right now and get a fogger, but I definitely think it can be beneficial. I'm just going to close it again so it can fill up because I felt like you couldn't really see it now it's coming out. Um, now one of the issues that can sometimes come up with foggers is it can cause respiratory issues. One thing I will say is if you don't have enough ventilation, say you have, um, I don't know, like a wooden vivarium and there's only like one ventilation hole at the back, you know with the mix of stale air added to moisture from the fogger, yeah bacteria is going to grow, that's going to cause an issue. But if you do have a well ventilated tank, a lot of these exoterras are very well ventilated through the front, through the top, um, and you have geckos like this, then they certainly can be beneficial. I don't think I would recommend leaving them on for like 10, 20 minutes. I think a good minute or two could do well every other day maybe if you really want to top it up, especially in the UK. Um, whilst I'm, when I'm filming this, we had a lot of hot weather and I have been spraying, I'm going to just turn this down a little bit, it's getting very white in here. I've been spraying down the tanks multiple times a day because it's been getting so hot and I don't want them to dehydrate. And I think something like this, uh, not only does it give them like a really cool atmosphere in here, obviously I think partly that's what a lot of people like if we're being honest, um, but it can be very beneficial. And even now, just feeling the glass um, with my hands, you can feel little moisture drops. And I have to say, performance-wise, this has done really, really well. And the third and final place I'm going to be testing this fogger is with my leopard gecko in his bioactive tank. I'm going to be doing a voiceover for this because, as I said in the past, his room is next to the living room and it's very hard to film without getting any audio interruptions so I'm going to just speak now whilst I'm setting that up, getting it ready for him. Now you may be wondering, oh my goodness, I thought leopard geckos shouldn't have this much humidity, what is going on? It is true that it can be very dry where they live, but if you go deep, there's actually not even that far, like two inches down in the ground where they burrow, we know they burrow, we know they tunnel, the moisture level rises. and. If you think about it, why do we put a humid hide in for a gecko that um, should only experience really dry, um, you know, air, humidity? Obviously in the wild they must seek out more humid areas to successfully shed and in that situation they're doing that by burrowing. Now when using a fogger with a leopard gecko, would I say yes, everyone should use one? No. I think the only situations this can really work and be safe in are well ventilated bioactive tanks. Now the tank I use with Drogo is from Custom Reptile Habitats. It is um, very, very well ventilated. It's a massive tank. It's 80 gallons. I mean, it's three foot uh, long, you know. It's... I, I believe it will be safe. Not only will it benefit Diego, but also the plants. Um, that would be a situation I would use this in. I'm most likely going to keep using this with either my Chihua or Crested Gecko, but I wanted to show you this as an example of technically what you could do with a fogger. I thought we'd just focus on Lyra for this bit. So to sort of summarise how I feel about this uh, fogger, I think some improvements could be made on the tube and also the suction cups 
you could make it easier if they were like the clip-on ones that I was talking about. But overall, I do like that the tube does collapse back into a smaller tube, so you don't have tube. I said tube so many times. Tubing hanging everywhere. The actual unit itself is really good. I like that it is sort of tinted in colour, so hopefully that prevents against any algae buildup which may occur. Sound-wise, I've been keeping it on this whole time. It's on right now, so you can hear. It's not that bad. You know that it's on because you can hear a slight sound, but it's nothing really disturbing. Um, but overall, I do actually like this. I will continue using it. Thank you to Swell for sending it to me. I'll leave links below. By the way, I am an affiliate, so if you do buy something via that link, I will earn a small commission. Um, but I hope this video has been helpful. As I said, if there's anything you're really interested in, if you're wondering, will this work? I want to see what this is like in real life. Um, let me know below. I'll see what I can do. But thank you for watching, guys, and goodbye. Thank you.